Well, welcome to Illicit Greenland. I am staying right here at the Hotel Vide Falk, or the White Falcon, right here on the very edge of the waterfront in Illulissa. This is one of the finest hotels in town. And it's again owned by the same company that owned the old camp in Kangerlussuaq, which is Albatross Arctic Circle, which is one of the major tour operators here in this region. So they offer tours both in Kangerlussuaq and in Illulissa. And a little snowman. I'm just waiting around here uh, because the check-in is not for two more hours. Uh, they do have some cool Greenlandic attire here. Looks like traditional attire over this. This is a more female version, I think. The comics and really intricate designs. This is very Greenlandic. These um, kind of semi-circular patterns. Well, folks, I don't even want to show it to you yet, but talk about upgrades. Now, this is the second unrequested upgrade that I've received on this trip. And this is quite the upgrade. So I ordered a room without a view and I got this view. Oh my goodness. Amazing view over the Illulicit Ice Fjord. So cool. Absolutely amazing. This hotel is amazing. This was $119 Canadian, so round about $80, 85 US for a view like that, including breakfast in a very expensive place. So this is a steal. Wow. Two twin beds, coffee facilities. So that's nice. TV. This is this is comfortable. I could I could stay a long time here. I am falling in love with Greenland, as you probably have already noticed. They do have a massive crack in the window, though. I think that the hotel must be settling or, or maybe a bird smashed into the window. I don't know, but they're doing some repairs to the hotel. So maybe that's part of it. Oh, so it's a shared balcony with all the other units. Oh, wow, what a view. Incredible. This is Greenland. Oh my goodness. Out of this world. I'm gonna go ahead to the town center now and check it out. It is so disgusting though. My shoes are going to be soaked after this day because there's so much melting snow, but uh, it's of little concern to me. I'll just dry them off and move on with life. Though in retrospect, if you are coming to Greenland, bring boots and probably rubber boots. My girlfriend had suggested rubber boots and I kind of Shrugged it off probably too soon, not realizing just how wet it would be here. I don't know why I thought it would be drier for some reason. I thought it would be maybe, you know, thick snow or maybe mud. I didn't even really think of it, but it's it's sloggy. So definitely bring some covered footwear that's waterproof, completely waterproof, because my shoes are soaked. So you get the sense that it's a very artistic place. Right outside of people's homes here, you can see paintings right next to their windows. This one is of a polar bear being ridden by two Greenlandic people. One is wearing the, well, I guess they're both wearing traditional dress. This one's a bit more naughty. It's a topless figure of some sort. I'm not sure what that is, but interesting. So this is the main street here through town. Kind of crossroads of two main streets, actually. There's a fire hall. Looks like this is a, maybe a grocery store or uh, possibly, I think it's a grocery store. And this is the main road. So this is what you would call downtown, I suppose. Here, Lulissa, it's city center. I'm gonna go see what I find. I heard there's some good cafes, restaurants here. They're all quite expensive, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a happening place. 4,700 people live here. So it is Greenland's second largest town after Newark. It does look a lot more developed than anywhere and none of it really. I guess the closest that this resembles would be a Kaluit, but even so it seems a bit richer, maybe just a bit more put together. I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's, it just seems a bit more developed. Very cool town. All right, heading in this store, local grocery store. So we'll see how expensive it is. 
I mean, some things are legitimately expensive. Like this would be like seven dollars for a barbecue sauce, but that's not even that unreasonable, to be honest, given location. Maybe nine dollars for a box of cereal. So yeah, it's up there, but it's not as high as none of it for a lot of things. And flour is like four bucks, so that's really reasonable, actually. But yeah local grocery store here in Ilulissat, and it's really not that expensive. I mean, I'd pay these prices. It's like four bucks here for butter. That's not a lot of money, even by Canadian standards. Four dollars for a large juice. These are all normal prices in Canada, so wow. It's actually really not expensive compared to what I thought it would be. So there's some Northern Lights inspired buildings, as you can see here. Row apartments, basically really cozy downtown they really have everything here it's so livable i'm actually annoyed that i'm not able to work here as a teacher because honestly it's kind of better than none of it it's more comfortable at least there's more going on here even at it doesn't have this level of you know commerce and at it's a lot bigger than here it's about double the size of Illulisset, but it doesn't have as much creature comforts as you'll find here in town so greenland's doing something right that's for sure and this was recommended to me this is the cafe Iluliak which is supposed to be home to some of the best micro brews in town or craft beers. So I'm gonna go check that out. So this is the pale ale here at the uh, Cafe Iluliak. This is the Emiak Brewery also. So trying out their pale ale, it's actually really good. It's like a hazy IPA. So the price of this was a uh, 60 Danish kroner. So not too bad for the Arctic. So most entrees here at the restaurant are about eh, 100 to 200 kroner. So pretty much standard, I guess, for Canadian prices. Yeah, nice little space though. They got these, you know, fur headrests on their seating. A little local vibe, so that's really good. And they have a real Italian espresso machine, which is kind of unheard of in Greenland. So there's that. Very unpretentious too. So I was gonna go into this place called Books and Coffee Illicit for a coffee, but it's actually a gift shop. So they have a lot of carvings and furs and other things here. Really cool store, I'm gonna show you inside. Books and Coffee is one of the best places to stock up on Inuit art when visiting Illulisset. Their collection featured several unique items, such as carved bone bracelets, small models of kayaks and canoes, miniature kamatik sleds, traditional sealskin drums, a wide selection of sealskin hats, boots, and gloves, as well as the very unique Tupelec carvings that are native to Greenland unique monster figures that are part of Greenlandic shamanistic legends. Carvings ranged from reasonably to ridiculously priced, with some starting at $30, but others reaching as high as thousands of dollars a piece. This is the Zion Church, which is beautiful here up against the icebergs of Disco Bay below. So it looks like the community put some sand and salt down. So a little bit easier to walk right now. I'm not sure what denomination it is, but uh, yeah, Zion Church. Looks like a ton of ice moved its way into the bay overnight. This is pretty clogged, as you can see. There's just so much on the surface of the water. But yeah, such incredible beauty here in Ululisset. I will definitely be back here. It's just, it's too gorgeous of a place and largely undiscovered. There are a few Danish tourists here. There's a few German tourists here, but honestly, hardly anybody in the world comes here, so. I have no idea why. It's gorgeous. All right, I have made it here to the Nud Rasmussen Museum. And this is a set of whale bones that you can see, little archway they've created, and that is the birthplace of Nud Rasmussen, that old sod house right there in between these two whale bones. Very cool. This is the actual museum. And if you're not familiar with Nud Rasmussen, he was a Greenlandic Danish explorer born right here in Illulisset. And he explored all of Greenland, Northern Canada, even out to Alaska, all the Inuit realms. So very cool history here in Illulisset. So a lot of cool artifacts here on display outside. There's a traditional Inuit drying rack, kayak, and kayak is actually spelled Q-A-J-A-Q here, the traditional Inuit spelling. 
not the K-A-Y-A-K that we use. And these are two Kamateks, which are Inuit sleds. They're traditionally pulled by sled dogs, of course, and here in Illicit, they still are. In Nunavut, in Canada, they're primarily, almost exclusively pulled by skidoos. And this is the Nud Rasmussen Museum, which is a beautiful red wooden building right on the shore here, overlooking the Illicit Ice Fjord. And if you catch it at the right moment, you can hear the calving of the glaciers breaking off into the water. So I am leaving the museum because it is closed today, but the open air museum is at least open. Beautiful views down there to the harbor, and I'm enjoying a walk. And you'll notice that these boardwalks basically can be found all around town. And even small mini boardwalks here give access to individual houses. So without those, residents would find it a bit harder to get around because this is a very hilly landscape and a lot of the houses are perched right on top of the hillside. So they use these boardwalks in an attempt to at least make it easier for residents to reach their homes. Very cool. So this is pretty cool. They have a huge community skating rink. They have a skateboard park there and this massive Kamatek sled. I don't know if it's just for play, but that is impressive. All right, back at the Café Eluliak. Perhaps predictably, I ordered the latte. So we're gonna try this out here at the Cafe Luliak. Looks really good. Well, it's sad just how short the days are here. The sun is beginning to set. It's about 4.30 p.m. It'll be probably getting to be pitch dark by about 5.30. So I got about an hour more for sightseeing. I was slowed down today, of course, due to these really icy roads. You can see that guy there is wearing the right footwear, unlike myself. Beautiful views of Illulisset, so colorful with the reds and the greens and the blues and the yellows. So many cool buildings here. It is one of the most picturesque towns in the north that I visited. So this over here is the local processor of seal and whale meat. So you can go in here and buy seal and whale. They'll sell it to you just like a butcher shop and they do not want video or photography. So I'm not gonna get too close to it but just to show you how incredible that part of their culture is. It's a super important part of their culture to be able to eat traditional country foods like seal and whale. Definitely a cute little town, very colorful. You can even see the fence here, all painted. Look, it's like a playground though, so I guess it's a kid's area. Cafe Nuka is across the road. That looks really good too. We'll likely check that place out at some point as well. Yeah, apart from the really sloggy, disgusting, icy roads, this is a really, really great place to visit. I'm actually surprised at just how much commerce there is here. None of it, you'd get two to three stores, you know, max per community, that's it. And you're very limited in selection and everything else. The Canadian government is doing a horrible job at economic development of none of it. And this here is another boutique shop, the Icy Clothing Store, I guess. There's the Hotel Illulicit where I almost stayed before I opted for the Vide Falk Hotel on the waterfront because it was located right on the water. And that is the Naliarak restaurant. It looks like they had bars, steaks, etc. Another boutique across the way, Boutique 56. And back over there, the Cafe Nuka. So a lot of stuff going on here. It's amazing how developed this town is. I am actually floored. I thought this would be a backwater. I don't know why I thought that. I just don't know anything about Greenland. What I'm noticing now is that there's the sound of howling dogs in the distance. So I think there's a lot of sled dogs that are kept on leashes maybe outside of town, I'm not too sure, but they are howling in huge numbers. So maybe this is unsurprising, but uh, because this is Denmark, they take recycling very seriously. You can see these recycling containers all around town. You would never see this in Nunavut under any circumstance. They pretty much throw everything out there and burn the garbage. Another major difference that I've spotted between Nunavut and Greenland, that's pretty obvious, is that Greenland has paved roads and Nunavut does not at least almost none. Almost every road here is paved, at least in town. That is unheard of for the Canadian Arctic. 